Hello YouTubers and welcome back to another FSX Global video here on YouTube. In this video we're going to be doing a full flight tutorial in the PMDG 737NGX from PMDG Simulations and it's basically going to be a three part, this part being the pre-flight, the second part being the departure and the third part being arrival. Um, we're going to be going through all the procedures we would take. So in this video we're going to test we've got the MCP, the DUs, the FMC, the overhead panel, everything like that. We're using the Ryanair livery with the set 800 series with the winglets. So okay, so let's get started. So we're in the cockpit now and I've loaded it in the cold and dark state. That means that everything is switched off, the aircraft is off basically. This is how it would be when the first flight crew of the day would enter the aircraft. Firstly, we are going to go over to the overhead panel and switch the battery on and close the cover. And make sure the um, DC volts are on the battery. Um, select it out here on the battery. We're going to make sure that the two switches aside of that are also on the EC and we're going to go down here and switch the APU to the on position. A low oil pressure will be indicated in a minute and this small rod will climb to 8 and then peak at 8 and then drop back down to around 4, 4.5 and then this light here, the generator off bus light, uh, off bus light, will illuminate, and we can switch generator one on, and generator two on. And what the APU does, it's called the auxiliary power unit, and it's at the back of the aircraft. So if we were to go outside in a minute, we'd hear it starting up, and that's going to provide us our power. However, you can use ground power for selecting in the FMC. You can use ground power on the uh, ground connections, and then click that to on and that would do the same job as the APU, but you do need the APU on for engine start. So it's around 4 now, this light should come on in a minute, and we can turn generators 1 on, and generator 2 on. Now, because we've got the APU running, we need to do the um, overhead panel checks. So, because we've got the APU running, we need the left aft pump on. We're going to go up here, leave all the fuel pumps as they are. We're going to make sure the uh, source is auto and the control panel is normal. We're going to make sure the VHF nav is to normal. IRS and FMC transfer switches are on normal. Your damper can stay on. We're going to make sure that spoilers are on. And we're going to make sure the flight controls are on with the covers closed. Next, we're going to come down here and make sure that APU generator is on is selected for the AC and batteries on. If you're using ground power you switch it to the ground power switch but obviously there's no volts in because we're not using ground power. Standby power should be auto and these sh should be uh, have the covers closed as well. All that's done. Window wipers should be off. All all lighting we should have just have the steady lights on. If we were in a, at night we'd have the logo light on. Uh, Chime the seatbelt sign, I mean no, non-smoking sign usually, but we'll keep that off because it's just a chime, there is no smoking sign. Seatbelt sign can go on. Emergency exit lights can be armed. Equipment calling can be off for now because um, if you're in a place like Las Vegas flying, you usually have that on because it's quite hot. Uh, circuit breaker lights and panel lights can be off because we're in the day. Window heats, we can test them test both sets of lights and then they can switch on. Pito heats can also go on. Anti-ice is not required. All the electrical pumps can go on. We can test the cockpit voice recorder. All these gauges should be fine. Um, pressurization should be auto and our cruise altitude is 32,000 feet. On a flight today from Oslo Torp to Malmö in Sweden um, air conditioning, recirculation fans on, packs auto, isolation valve is auto, also auto, and the engine generators can be off and the APU bleed can be on. Trim air should be on, and the average temperature should be around 20 throughout the cabin. If not, you can turn these on to heat it up. Next, we're going to go up here and test the flaps and set the IRSs to nav. We're going to make sure the electrical switches are on, off, on, and no light, no um, lights. 
And we're also going to test the Mac air speed warnings and stall warnings. Number two shouldn't work for the moment though. Okay, and that is the overhead panel complete. We're going to go down here and test our oxygen. And that seems to work fine. And we can go ahead and test all the lights. So this turns on all the lights in the cockpit so we can check if any bulbs have gone. Okay, we're going to check the parking brake is set, which it isn't because we have the chocks. And we're going to check the landing gear lever is down, three green, and double check that up here. There are three green lights. We're going to check small switch here, and we'll check the recall. Where is it? Okay, so we're going to go to engine one um, extinguisher, APU extinguisher, and engine two extinguisher to make sure they work, to make sure the lights are on. And as we do that, we're going to make sure that the engine overheat and the engine 2 overheat lights switch on, which they do. We're going to check the cargo fire and make sure these uh, red lights turn on here, which they do. And we're going to go in test um, this as well. Just check those three green lights light up. Also we could go ahead and te test the TCAS but that will not work at the moment as we haven't aligned our IRSs. So that's it for the testing stages of the flight. Um, so that's basically the overhead panel complete for now. So uh, before engines start and we're going to go to the FMC. And we're going to go to FS Actions Fuel. We can just set uh, 12,000 uh, 12, pounds of fuel payload today we can just set random 60 people that's fine ground connections see ground power is there but we don't have ground power uh, doors because we don't need any doors and push back that's fine okay so let's go to the FMC and it's uh, nav data out of date so we need to select our um, reference airport which is Oslo Torp which is Echo November Tango Osco Oscar I'm going to select that in there, or you could set the uh, GPS's, but either way will work. And we're going to Malmo in Sweden, which is Echo Sierra Mike Sierra. We are Ryanair Flight 32, and we're taking off from where one eight here at Oslo. Departure: We're taking off from where one eight via the BOM G1 Golf departure which is there and we'll fill in the rest of our route which for our first via these are the airways which take us to the um, uh, waypoint which is Yankee 440 <coughs> to the Sabak waypoint next we're going to go to the Lima 617 uh, airway to Lalil. Then we're going to Lima 996 to Sierra Victor Delta. And that is our last waypoint. We can set our arrival into Malmo to ILS from 17 via the One Echo. Uh, star okay so we no re route dust discontinuity today our routes keyed in forwards we can go ahead and check through the route by clicking the step button by clicking this small uh, switch here to the right and we can step through our route and we can go ahead and activate that now okay next we're going to go to the um, perf init page by just clicking this first button here. You can double click against uh, to the left of ZWF, uh, ZFW, and cost index of Ryanair is 6 and a cruise altitude of 32,000 feet. And to check our reserves, either on your flight plan or going to the progress page and looking against your destination, and it says fuel at that destination is 8.3. So our reserves will be around 8.3, and we can execute. Oh, um, transition altitude for Europe, 6,000 feet, and that's all good. So we can execute that. Takeoff 
flaps 5 usually and our trim would be 4.64 by just double clicking and our centre of gravity is set 21.8% so near enough set the trim to 6.4 um, and then we use the QRH quick reference handbook for our speeds ok so that's the most of the FMC setup now so um, we could go on to here runway is dry today runway slope we just put zero in there and one way wind today is uh, if I can see on here is one four zero at eight knots for more wind and the takeoff speeds will be deleted because of the wind so we can go ahead and reset our takeoff speeds okay so we're gonna go and um, set up the PF and the NDU and what I like to have is it needs, the barrier needs to be set for European VOR and VOR VR1 and VOR2 on terrain can go on and the um, the knob that has the numbers around it click the middle and it will give you the TCAS and some dots will appear around your destination airport uh, just double check the barrow is set which it is and um, we can go ahead and click here, I like to have the meters on here as well but you can also have the uh, angle of your turn if you want um, we're going to check the clock, it says the right time and we're, we're going to check our uh, barrow set on here as well, so 1013 and that's not standard so we're going to check that, there we go auto brake turn it to the left once to RTO reject to take off and we're going to set up the MCP the mode control panel both flight directors can go on course could be 180 as we're taking off from where 18 set them on both sides um, for the target speed we want V2 plus 20 so 136 is our V2 so 156 um, heading for this runway is 177 and we'll set that to our transition altitude of 6000 feet ok and we could probably do the same for the first officer side here as well so now we can go ahead and test our TCAS by clicking the small button on the top and a, a man will say if it passes or fails a voice will sound TCAS test passed okay so there's our TCAS test has passed um, this is a not a very in-depth tutorial it's just showing you how to get off the ground but you'd fill in on your flight plan you fill in all these cruise winds and stuff um, for the climb 250 knots under 10,000 feet our target speed is 278 so our ground speed will be about 450 knots um, you can fill in all of this if you have a proper flight plan from like PFPX and stuff like that um, so I think this is it for part 1 so we're ready to go and in part two will be setting up for pushback and then actual pushback and departure so I do hope you've enjoyed this video please give it a like if you liked it and a comment any questions you may have I will try and answer them and also in the description will be part two and part three when they are out in the next couple of days so don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more and do check out my uh, PMDG tutorial series which explains everything on this aircraft so I'd like to hope you I'd like to thank you for watching and I'll see you in part two.